All right, for the next, I guess, 40 minutes, we're going to talk about contact tracing. Uh, much talked about topic and uh, the way I am going to talk about is how we can use uh, the power platform to work on contact tracing and build a contact tracing app. Uh, so uh, I'm a solution architect. I work in Microsoft Dynamics 365 exclusively and right now working with IBM. Uh, that's my photo there and my son's photo is at the Glacier National Park that uh, we visited and I love going to national parks. My blogs, my Twitter account, uh, any other information here and LinkedIn. So let's come straight to the topic. Uh, what is contact tracing? Uh, so it's a key to slowing the spread of COVID-19 or any other infectious disease and helps to protect you, your family and your community. And right now, uh, one of the most important things in the world. Uh, that everybody is trying to do. This is a workflow put in by CDC. And I just wanted to share it here and I I based my design of the contact tracing app based on this workflow, uh, basically. Uh, so it starts with the patients. They have some kind of infection of, con of COVID-19 or coronavirus and they are interviewed with the contact tracer. The patient who identifies contacts who they have been in contact with over a period of time, maybe one or two weeks since the identification of the infection. The contact is tracked for assignment. Contact is assigned, notified. And then uh, based on their symptoms or their health conditions, they are put into quarantine. They do a self quarantine or they are going for a testing to a test facility. OK, go to the next year. So I designed the app based on certain personas. Uh, we have the contact tracing agent. Uh, his or her main goal is to be able to finish as fast as possible the task in front of them. So they are trying to uh, do some tracing, uh, get updates on different cases, and they want to be uh, because of the load of work that they are going to get, they want to do it as quickly as and as efficiently as possible. My second persona is the patient or the infected contact or exposed contact. Uh, this person is very terrified. They want to information on coronavirus, be able to do a self health check and also find testing locations nearest to their home and be able to do this everything on a mobile phone on an app. Uh, and then finally, we have the contact tracing manager. They want to visualize trends, identify, sorry, uh, visualize trends, identify hotspots uh, where the spread is happening and be able to take actions to prevent the spread of the virus. So the, where does the Power Platform fit in for contact tracing? So I've used the all, mostly all of the apps of Power Platform. I use Power BI to analyze the data, do a case trends, uh, doing infection hotspots, look at the KPIs, uh, use the model driven power app, use the customer service hub, portals, uh, case management, knowledge articles, power automate to write the workflows, record creation and update, uh, email notifications, and then the power virtual agent to do a self health check and appointment testing appointments. Let's go straight into the app now. So this, if you see, is the customer service hub. Uh, and I created the contact tracing app based on the customer service hub. Uh, this is the Power BI dashboard. I added this dashboard to the hub. So the users uh, who are tracers who are the tracing agents can see uh, what is their performance or what is the number of cases, what are the infections and this and we'll go more into this uh, as we show the app in detail. Uh, these are some of the activities that the agent is supposed to do. So if they are to do take any actions, uh, they can do this. I converted the account into a locations, uh, renamed this as locations, so all these different uh, locations where the infections or exposures are happening and we are tr tracking all of this. So this is all preloaded. 
uh, you would have the senior centers, you would have the uh, restaurants, Burger King, Buffalo Wild Wings, all of that, and the contact information and all, all the Dunkin' Donuts. So all that information is entered here. These are the contacts. The contact can be of two types. It could be an exposed contact or an infected contact. And this is information of the infected contact is uh, gathered and from different labs or hospitals, and they are integrated into the contact tracing app. And as soon as an infected contact is created, there is a Power Automate or uh, flow running in the background, which creates a case for the infected contact. So that's where the action starts, and that I'm going to follow that process. So first persona, uh, I'm going to take the role of a contact tracing agent who is working on a case, and then we'll walk. I'll walk you through that how that works. So this is the case, and these are my active cases. I'm the agent right now. I have to follow up on my active cases. I'm picking up one of my active case. Uh, the case is auto created by the system as soon as the data comes in from integration of the infected contacts. I get to know the case title, which is the name of the patient himself or herself, and the origin is hospital testing lab integration. I get details of the patient, phone number, uh, and I also see if it is any other details I want to have. Is it okay to contact? All this information is provided here. And these are my, I, this is what I've created as a guideline for me. So I know what are my next tasks. So I know my patient name, what is I created. Uh, I set up an appointment for the patient. I did it at today, one o'clock. And I have been able to gather the basic information is complete or not. Now for that information, which I was gathering, I created this settings tab. So in this tab, I mentioned, okay, she had a, Allison had a coffee with her friends. She was at this Dunkin' Donut location. And then I also was able to add to the case, okay, who were the exposed contact? So Allison met with Dan Jackson, who was with her at that uh, particular setting. So I am using the case entity, but I'm able to connect to the places that the infected uh, patient has gone to or visited and I'm able to gather all the information and be able to uh, get it all inside this app. So I got a list of exposed contacts and the places that are visited by the patient. So I can say, okay, information gathering is complete. At the same time, I let the infected patient know that they are going to get an email inviting them to go to a portal and be able to log in and uh, enter their all their health information. I don't want to uh, ask all the information when the patient or, or the patient's caregiver can enter all the information also if needed. So now I have uh, talked with the patient because of uh, social distancing. The patient has been able to provide me all the exposed contacts. I've created all these contacts here. And then this, the way it is, is every time an exposed contact is created, the system auto automatically sends an email to the contact to let them know that there is a, a possible exposure of uh, coronavirus and you, you and they provide them access to the portal where they are given and we'll, I will walk you through the portal. So this is an auto email that was just created, uh, which was sent to this uh, Allison and, uh, and this is, Thank you for providing the information to a tracing agent. Please follow below the link to the contact tracing portal and a separate email will be sent to you with a password. And all of that information is provided here. So that is my job as a contact tracing agent. I'm working on different cases and I'm getting all this information in here. I'm ex getting a list of the exposed contacts and the system sends an email out to the infected contact as well as the exposed contact to log into the portal. So now let me take you to the portal here. So this is the portal. This is a uh, out of the box portal uh, that I've uh, built for the contact tracing app. It has a knowledge base and knowledge base has all the information about coronavirus, contact tracing, uh, FAQs. And I mean, this is 
the out of the box uh, portal, which I just converted some of the knowledge bases to show contact tracing. And what I did is I also added a virtual agent to the portal. So then I can ask questions here. Let's say the, I, I, you know, I can just start, start a new session and we can go from here. So this is a virtual agent. Now I, the, this portal can be accessed using a mobile phone or online, as you know, and the virtual agent can guide the infected patient or exposed patient to get information on coronavirus or, or testing or anything. So let's say I want to do a health check. So I made this little app, a virtual agent to do a health check and say, okay, uh, I can help you with the health self health check to determine if you have coronavirus. Are you ready now? Uh, say yes, I am ready now. Let's get started. Do you have high fever? So those are some of the questions. I just put in some sample questions and say yes, I do have high fever. Uh, do you have difficulty breathing? So I can say yes or no, and based on what I select, obviously it will take uh, different routes. So for now, let's say I do have difficulty breathing. So it's, it determines that I may have symptoms of coronavirus and then it also says it can help me look up and schedule a testing appointment. So now what it is doing is because I could possibly have a symptom of uh, coronavirus, I want to schedule testing, uh, might as well get me tested and schedule an appointment for me. So I can say, do you want to schedule a testing appointment? And say yes here. So it's asking me for my current zip code. So based on where you are located, it wants to know what is the nearest testing location. So I'll just put in one zip code here. Okay, so it says, okay, based on my zip code, the following are the nearest testing location. So it's basically tapping into a database of testing locations that are available for every state. And then say, okay, in this zip code, there are three or four testing locations. You can go and visit one of them. I can pick and choose which one I want to visit. So based on what I feel comfortable with. So I'm, I'm choosing Hackensack Medical Center. And then it goes back, uh, the Power Automate, and gets you information on what are the possible appointments. Now, if this appointment system is available, it can schedule one or take that information and provide it to the contact, infected contact or the exposed contact. And, and then I can pick and choose one of the appointment date and time and an email will be sent to me. And I think I'm happy with this, that I was able to log in, uh, talk to the virtual agent, get all the information that I want, and be able to uh, set up an appointment for testing of coronavirus. So all this information uh, that, you, that would be required, I'm able to get it uh, using my mobile phone or online. So that's one of the good things for me. So I'm very happy with this. Okay, so all this data comes back here. Uh, let me also show you what other things I have created in this. So if I go to my profile, let me go to the profile page. Okay, it doesn't want me to go there. Okay. So in my profile, I've also added uh, information about myself I can add, and I also created a health history. So I want to know, okay, uh, I want to keep my profile up to date and uh, provide any health history. So if I'm going for any testing or if there is any of this uh, symptom, if I'm a diabetic or asthmatic, and if I need an interpreter, all of this information can be provided. So based on this, a Power Automate workflow can run and it can update the case or the contact to priority status. So the status here, which is normal, if I am diabetic or asthmatic, it will change the status to uh, update it to high priority. And then all the high priority cases will be urgently considered because of to take care of the health of the individual. So this is one way of uh, having control over what information you provide due to HIPAA. There are a lot of restrictions, but because of COVID-19, we can uh, we can have the patient provide the information and the system automatically update the patient case based on what kind of symptoms or what kind of health history they have. So this becomes like a uh, personal private uh, profile, which only the patient or the patient caregiver can enter here. 
And based on that, this we can take action on the background using Power Automate to update the status or priority for the patient. And this helps the patient to uh, also uh, feel comfortable when entering their information. So this is all in the uh, portal that we created, uh, that I created here. And I can also look into the knowledge base. I can uh, get more details about FAQs for COVID-19. And this is all information I can get from my phone or on the app here. So now uh, coming back to my information is here. All this uh, case as it's moving, it's getting co completed. I have reached the exposed contacts and they have entered the information in the system. Now I'm going to go to the next stage. And then based on the requirements of testing for the infected patient and the exposed patient, I can say of oh, the testing is complete. Uh, is are the exposed patient quarantine complete? Have they completed the uh, due date of 14 days of quarantine that they have to go through? So that information I can enter here. And also, finally, what is the status of the patient? Has the patient done self quarantine in the hospital, recovered at home, or in very rare cases they could be deceased also? So this uh, this app actually helps us in uh, tracking coronavirus and uh, keeping track of the cases, the locations where they are entering, where they are meeting different people and the different settings. So every setting is entered in here and kept uh, track of by the system. So that way we can then now run reports. So then we can run analytics on this using Power BI and then we can do uh, any kind of reporting that is required once we have all the information uh, through this app. So I'll show you uh, the Power BI uh, reporting that I've created for this. So let me quickly check if there are any questions on this. Okay, no more questions yet, okay. Okay, so this is the dashboard. Uh, using Power BI, I was able to connect to Dynamics 365 and be able to get information that I want to create reports on. So I have the different contacts, I have the different status of the contacts that are exposed, how many of them are exposed, infected, recovered, or normal. So based on the data collected through the app, I'm able to get the contacts by status report. And I'm also getting the number of cases. I can see the trend. So we can visualize uh, from here what are the trends of the cases that are being entered in the system. And I see that after the 4th of July weekend, which was a big weekend in US, uh, there's a sudden spike in the number of cases. And that has uh, uh, been uh, because of the long, long weekend as well as uh, a holiday weekend here. So there, there would be reasons why a lot of cases of uh, coronavirus which are created. So all this analysis we can do using uh, Power BI. Here I have the infection. So now I can uh, visually see what are the uh, locations and the, the locations are where we entered when we entered the settings where the inf infected patient and uh, had him uh, had a setting uh, or the location where they visited and probably had exposure. And because of that, we can see that it most of those uh, infections are happening at the locations like restaurants and food services, senior care medical center, uh, banks or financial services, schools, and all of that. So I can we can we can go deep down and say, okay, you know, there are certain types of businesses where there are a lot of infections happening. And then the analytics can be run to say, okay, uh, we should take further control on this and be able to, uh, you know, look at how we can minimize the spread of coronavirus at this particular location. Uh, so take us take some action so that you know the spread is controlled. And then finally, we have the heat map, so to speak. So I have the I have the map for the different places where this infection is happening. So let me expose this further. 
then let's drill down to see. OK, so this is let's say I did more uh, on certain points where we can see where this infections are so I can go further down. I can see the heat map. I can see the locations where there are infections. More infections are happening. So I, I see there are a couple of locations in New Jersey where infections are happening and which are more alarming so i can now further drill down using power bi and then look at okay so this is where uh, i need to look at this there are like 30 uh, cases of exposure being reported at this town or city and recovered are 10 and infected are 13. so now uh, i'm using power bi the uh, the you know using the data which i have captured using the app the contact tracing app and then i can go and look at all the hot spots and i can now do my further analysis to say okay now this uh, town's uh, numbers are higher than normal or you know uh, there is some kind of a uh, issue we need to now look into this few towns here and see what the problem is and prevent the spread in these locations so that uh, you know in addition to this i can also use the ai insights that you can get from power bi so now i'm using the power bi data set and then i'm able to generate insights from here so i can go here and say okay give me some insights in this to get quick insights because i did it already earlier so i don't have much data but then uh, this runs AI on my uh, data that we have collected through uh, the system and then says, okay, this is the locations where uh, in New Jersey has more uh, exposures, uh, restaurants have the highest number of uh, infections being spread. So all these analytics we can do, there is a outlier uh, because of, on a certain date, there are highest number of spikes. And this kind of AI insights we can get uh, from the data that is collected through the app. So we can now take some of this AI insights and pin it onto the dashboard and then take that, create a new dashboard from here and then take that dashboard and import it into Dynamics 365. So that further helps us to say, okay, now I can show the dashboard to all the users of Dynamics 365 so they can uh, look at the data and look at the analytics and uh, take further action. So if somebody is asking what is the ex what are the number of people infected on my zip code or in my location or in this particular location, they can actually provide that information right from this dashboard too. So now uh, let me show you some of the things of how I created this. OK, so this is the portal. I think uh, Danish is going to go further deep down into this, but I'll just briefly show you some part of the uh, portal that we created to. OK, and then Power BI. So two things I will show. I will show you the Power Virtual Agent and the portal and uh, getting that data in there. So I have the health check topic. And this health check topic is what I showed. Uh, it has different phases. I can go to the authoring canvas. And it's, it basically helps me to check if I have uh, coronavirus symptoms or if I, uh, what, whether I have high temperature or fever or difficulty breathing. So whatever uh, symptoms which are, uh, we, what we need to track is mentioned here. So it, it says, okay, are you ready now? And then it says, okay, do you have high fever? And based on the answers given, it, it uh, also then further says, do you have difficulty breathing? And it finally determines, okay, you need to schedule a testing appointment. And then I take it to an, another uh, topic, which is 
uh, for testing. So I created a testing locations topic and it redirects to the testing locations topic. And then testing locations topic is then uh, running its own. Uh, uh, okay. Own process and it goes to different questions. So asking for the zip code and uh, being able to uh, find the ideal location nearest for this particular zip code. So all that information is provided in this uh, in this triggering phases here. Now I, I'm able to then take this, manage it, embed it into my channels. I can embed it in a custom website and then take that uh, and create it an iframe in here. I can show you that uh, iframe right now, right here. This is my out of the box app and I created this virtual agent iframe and put in the uh, put in my Power Virtual Agent in there. For Power BI, I use uh, Power BI desktop and connected it using a C the CDS connector to create my uh, uh, create this uh, data set and created the dashboard from 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 the information uh, from the visualizations and reports that I created and then I published the dash, dash, dashboard onto Power BI uh, from Power BI and I imported it into Dynamics 365. So that is in short about creating a contact tracing app using the, the Power Platform. If there are any questions, OK, Danish says he's not covering portal, so that's good. <laughs> OK, so no more questions. So, so yeah, I'm here. Yeah, I'm here. I have a, is this, uh, is this uh, something that IBM, that IBM is actually, is actually doing? doing? Uh, IBM also has other technologies. So this was, yeah, this was one of the things that we did present. Yep. Cool. Thank, cool. You, for Thank you for sharing. Uh, yeah, yeah. And my goal was to bring everything together. So uh, I wanted to bring in, uh, you know, Power Apps, Power Automate, Power Virtual Agent, and Power BI, and then create one app that use utilizes all the technologies offered by Power Platform, and takes that to the to creating a contact tracing app. And I believe this can be used by state, city governments. It can be used by universities. It can be used by townships. Uh, and, and it probably took me less than a week to create it. And all this was created without writing a single line of code. So that uh, is very easy to do. That's great. That's great. Thank you. Yeah, and it, yeah. you did really cover a lot of different aspects of the power platform there. Yep. OK, thank you, everyone. Uh, this are some slides on the communities. Uh, please do take part in our communities. And you know, this is a knowledge sharing, information sharing uh, sessions that we organize for everyone. So the more participation we get, the better it is. So everybody can uh, share the knowledge and the gain some new, learn something new that, uh, as Mr. Phil Topness said earlier, that we are here to learn. And I, I learned a lot today too. There's a Microsoft Ignite event. It's a digital event that you can log into. And that's it. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Thanks. be here. Thanks.